Welcome to the Calendar tutorial for managing your dashboard. Uh, we're going to start here, not surprisingly, in the dashboard. Uh, you can da access the dashboard from basically any screen. Uh, when you're working in Calendar, you simply click on Dashboard and it will take you here. Now, within the dashboard itself, of course, there are a whole series of data sets, or what we call these boxes, we call them widgets, right? So each one of these boxes is called a widget, uh, and you have full control uh, to align these however you want, to group them however you want. And it's, and it's really important to note that however you set these, that's just for you, right? Other staff members will be able to have the opportunity to set their dashboard as they see fit. So if you pop in here and you make a bunch of changes, it's not affecting anyone else's uh, view of the dashboard. It's only changing yours, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show how you can set up different groupings, how you can modify those groupings, and of course, how you can utilize the dashboard widgets themselves. So uh, in this test account we've created, I have a series of groupings already in place. Uh, but let's say you wanted to create a new grouping. You would click over here on the right to, on this, uh, this plus symbol. This is the add new dashboard. So we'll go ahead and click on that. That's going to go ahead and bring open a whole series of options for us, right? These are all the different categories and specific dashboard widgets where you can select uh, what you want to see in your dashboard and the, or, and the order in which they will appear, okay? So you can go through and you can select kind of whatever you want here. You say, all right, well, I want this in the first position. Maybe I want devices uh, activity in the second position, device staging in the third, right? So you could create a grouping that's very topic specific. Maybe you want to call one devices, in which case you might call that dashboard name devices. Or if it's something where, hey, I'm just grabbing the ones I use the most often, even though they go across a series of different topics, maybe you call it something different, right? You just put, uh, these are my faves, right? Um, just as an example, right? So you can uh, stay topic specific or bounce around and choose wherever you like. And then once again, choose the order in which they appear. Uh, now it's important to note that you can only, you have a maximum of nine uh, options available on the dashboard widgets. So that means for each grouping, you can show nine uh, dashboard widgets. Uh, and then if you need more than that, of course, then you just create a second grouping or, or as many groupings as you want uh, with the specific widgets that you need. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add a couple more here, okay? I also wanna point, point out that the availability of dashboard widgets is dicta dictated very specifically by your security settings, right? So you may see on one of your coworkers' uh, uh, dashboards that they have access to dashboard widgets that you may not have access to. Uh, this is a very common one here, the monthly sales and monthly units. Uh, these do require a higher level of security access, specifically the invoice uh, business report writing access in order to have this widget show for you. So if you open this you know, this tab, invoicing, you're creating your dashboard views, and you say, boy, I'm not seeing those, that's related specifically to your security settings. So if you need access to these, then you would reach out to an admin within your organization and ask them to increase your security settings um, within your profile so that you then have access. And as soon as they make those changes, you would then see uh, the widgets appear within your list of options, okay? So it's, it's, it's that quick. Uh, but point being is if you want to create it, you call it what you like, you jump around, you grab the different options, you know, whatever it is you want to see here. Uh, you also have an option here at the very bottom uh, before you finalize this process where you can decide whether or not uh, you want uh, any links that you click on uh, to open as a new tab. So within the dashboard, you'll see patient names and invoices and a whole variety of things. By clicking on the patient name or the invoice, it will take you right to that place in Counselor. Uh, now, if you leave this unchecked, it'll just refresh your screen and put you into that spot. If you'd say, hey, I really want to keep that dashboard uh, open and I want this to open as a new tab, well, then you'd simply click here. And then when you click the patient name, for example, it'll open a new tab in your same browser. Uh, and so you've got the uh, patient profile, for example, open in one tab and the dashboard is still open on the previous tab. Okay, so just an option for you. But we're gonna take uh, kind of what we set here and click save. And what we'll see now is we now have a new grouping called faves, right? Um, this is not set in stone though, right? So any one of these groups, whether you created them or they're a preset in counselor, you can modify by simply clicking on the configure widget. So once again, off to the right here, the plus symbol, this was for creating new groupings. Right here, this is where we can configure existing groupings. So we could jump in and say, you know what? Actually, I don't really need this one. Or maybe I want to flip-flop a couple of these, right? You could jump in and make those changes. Or you want to add something. Let's 
So say I want to add something and I want to put it here in the third position. Now, if you happen to pick a position uh, multiple times, it's not really a problem, right? Counselor will still prioritize that or, you know, will order them for you. So for example, here we can see device aging is set as three and so is invoice payment. You know, as you're creating these, you may want to pay attention to the position number just so you have them exactly the way you want. But if you happen to duplicate a position, Counselor will resolve that for you. So once we click save, it's going to add that uh, dashboard widget. Here it is. Um, you can use it right away, of course. Um, and even though I had the same position, it, it resolved that automatically. Okay. So once again, add a new groupings here, modify existing groupings here. Uh, you can jump between the groupings, right, and see the specific dashboard widgets. And there are all kinds of different options, all kinds of different um, areas of focus within the dashboard, within the specific widgets. Um, within them themselves, you have the ability, of course, to see specific data sets. So just look at a couple examples here, uh, patient devices activity. We can jump around and see, show me, you know, everything that's out, everything that's received what needs to be ordered, what's out for order, what's received, et cetera, right? You can go through and see what's really happening uh, in your clinic. Or if you have multiple locations, you can decide via this dropdown whether you want to see the information for all clinics or if you want to zoom in on a specific clinic, right? And in the case of devices activity, you probably want to see that at a, at a clinic level, right? Whereas maybe uh, aging devices, these are all hearing instruments that have hit a certain age, let's say four years of age, you may want to look across all clinics because you maybe want to reach out to these patients across the whole organization, right? You're not necessarily focusing on one location, okay? And that's where uh, the, kind of the next step comes in regarding the ability of these dashboard widgets to assist you with taking the next step. So for example here, if we look at device warranty expiration, you could say, show me all the patients with warranties expiring next month. Great, there's my list, okay? Now I wish to reach out to patients. So I'm going to go ahead and send emails directly from here to patients. I'm going to go ahead and print off letters and then print off the envelopes or labels or postcards, or you want to drop this into a spreadsheet, right? Whatever fits your needs the best. Now, it's important to note that if you send emails directly from counselor here or you print off letters, counselor will automatically make a note in the patient's profile stating what happened. And, and of course, where that can help your team is if you have a patient, let's say, that receives a letter, let's say a warranty expiration letter or a warranty expiration email, and then calls your office and says, hey, I got your letter and I have a question, okay? Because you have initiated that action from in counselor, within counselor and the note is in the patient's profile, uh, anyone on staff would know right away what that patient's referring to, right? Or maybe they're referring to a confirmation email they received or a, an invoice that you mailed, right? You would see those notes within the patient profile. So there's no confusion. Okay, Mr. James. Yep, I see. We were, you know, we, you, your warranty is coming for expiration. You know, because you know that because you saw the letter in uh, a note about the letter in their uh, patient notes, right? So it just helps your whole team stay on the same page uh, when the activities are happening here are visible within the patient profile. Okay. Now, many of the widgets will have additional filtering. So for example, if you stay on this device warranty expiration, you'll see a little gear symbol off the top, right? That gives you more choices, right? And there are different choices based on the specific dashboard widget. So if you're looking at the, the basic uh, you know, search parameters here and say, yeah, I really wanna drill down a little further into this, right? Maybe I just want regular warranties or just extended, I want both, or I want to exclude patients that have upcoming appointments, right? That's a very common one. Um, or you want to look at maybe different warranty types, repair versus L&D or all. So this gives you some very fine-tuned control to refine the list further. And then, as I mentioned before, take the next step, okay? So we're not going to go through all the dashboards as a course on this overview, but I do encourage, encourage you to kind of play around, look at the different um, options available to you. Uh, because when the dashboard widget, widgets and the dashboard itself is used um, effectively, it can really save you a lot of time. It can really uh, reduce uh, potential errors or second guessing. You know, seeing your task list, for example, right from the dashboard can be very helpful. Um, just keeps you that quick reminder, okay, what's overdue, a few things, what's due today, and what's coming up in the future. All right, or creating tasks from here as well, or accessing stock or seeing patients with birthdays. There's a lot that you can do directly within the dashboard. So of course, if you have any questions about the setup and the kind of um, uh, options within the dashboard, please give us a call, email us, live chat us. We are always happy to help. And thank you very much for joining us for the counselor tutorial on managing your dashboard.